uh, in this video we've got a collage of projects uh, rushing to get done before launch day and uh, got most things done but uh, ran out of time. Oh, sure looks different black. We couldn't buy shark white at the um, they don't make it anymore. Interlux Micron CSC, shark white in the gallons. Uh, we can't get it. So, because I had to do a little bit of the touch-ups, those are those little white circles. That's a barrier coat down. Uh, because of that, I had to uh, buy black. So we're changing the color. It's supposed to last two seasons. So I guess when we see gray, we'll know it's time to paint again. How's it feel to be painting? I like painting, but oh, I forget how tiring it actually is. My arms feel like noodles, and I just started. <laughs> You'll okay. be doing the noodle dance. I just go slow and yeah. get it done. Good. No more shark weight. Now we're midnight black. It's so shiny. There's one now. The brown? Yeah. This boat with uh, very little, uh, had uh, no working engine, no instruments, and uh, you know I gutted it, I pulled the engine out, um, and then I decided to go electric, so I put an electric motor in, and uh, had a whole learning curve about that, so I learned about batteries, and charging systems, and wiring, and you know house banks, um, all the different solar panel and uh, monitoring systems. And that's what this channel is about. It's about sharing the knowledge that I learned, uh, documenting my journey as I uh, retrofitted this boat. I'm looking forward to next year. Next year, I'm going to be taking uh, the boat uh, out to uh, uh, out to the coast, into the ocean, and I'm looking forward to that. So uh, hopefully, you can follow along and join me. The batteries up. We did the uh, anti-foul. I'll show you that later. Uh, a couple snippets. Um, we had to change to black today because of the uh, we can't get shark white anymore. So my boat's not going to look like the bottom of a whale, but a more of a bottom of a killer whale, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> this is the electricals, and I've got some nice bus bars up here. This is for all the big stuff. Um, circuit breaker. This one here is my uh, my motor, the two big cables here, and then this cable and uh, no, this is the motor. This cable and this cable are going to my batteries. So this is my circuit breaker that shuts off um, my batteries. So basically I can disconnect the batteries from the entire system. Um, I'm getting rid of anything that was not tinned. Um, so right now this is going to go over to my DC uh, panel. Um, yellow is the proper color for um, for new for negative on a boat. Yeah, I didn't explain that very so well, but uh, essentially like um, all of the wiring that I had used on the boat was temporary. Um, I had put wiring in that was a non-marine grade uh, wire. So I basically, um, now that I've got things kind of permanently where they're roughly going, um, I've uh, pulled out all of the old wiring and I'm putting in all of the new Ancor um, tinted wiring, which is uh, marine grade, good for minus 50 to plus 50 and oil resistant, all that kind of thing. So. Um, I was just explaining that here. Righty tidy? Righty tidy, yeah. In doing the electricals, um, I have all crimped ends on and then a heat shrink um, oh. covering. That's good. It doesn't have to be too tight. Just oh. snug. Thank you. Right, actually, I'll pass you that. And can I pass you that? And can you take this cable out, please? Another one. Oh. 
and then you have it on those two right there and then join these two together so it basically it goes red black red black red black and then this is my 48 volts would be across these two so I, uh, I cut out a plate and I'm gonna build a cover that matches like a door and I'm gonna pre-drill my um, my uh, my key uh, a battery monitor and then bilge pump and I have a new alarm which is round so before I do that before I drill it I just wanted to see what it would look like with the panel on there okay, so if I follow kind of my pattern I drew the set I found the center of the board and I drew my square around this is roughly where this will end up on the panel so I can just put a couple of bolts in here um, or drill some holes um, make them equidistant so it looks uniform and I could basically just bolt these in uh, on the corners so you give it 12 but it take it'll take 5 to 30 volts um, but in it uses uh, 5 milliamps at 5 volts or it uses 25 milliamps at 30 volts so depending on what you give so it's probably going to be around 10 amps 10 milliamps and your uh, uh, wires on here and then my float switch is uh, is where the power is so I'll have 12 volts going down to my float switch coming back up here to the alarm when the switch engages this thing will go off me and uh, the other thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to rig up a temperature alarm for my controller so if the temperature gets to a certain degrees yeah. this will here will go off so I have two of these so I just have to kind of find a way to smartly organize them. So I've got a key, take the key at the top, alarm, alarm, voltage regulator, and then um, I've got a new, uh, so I've got two of those. And then this is my bilge pump. So I'm turning on the bilge pump on and off. Um, so I've got like four circles to cut. These things here take a one inch. And then uh, my Bluetooth, uh, wherever it is. This is my uh, Victron Energy um, BMV712, which is basically Bluetooth enabled. And uh, so I need to put this, these things on, all on this little inside this square. Um, yeah. So that's what I'm working on. Well, I'm just getting this ready here. This is my 10 gauge wire. And I'm just doing an estimate here to come around this corner. Looks like I need about that much. So I'm just marking it. Sorry, I'm bumping you. <laughs> okay. So the yellow is the, is the longest, it's the ground. This is a uh, safety wire. So it's tinned uh, by Alcor, or sorry, Anchor, Anchor. Okay, I got 45 minutes before I kicked out here. I think these ones here are Eight millimeter. And these ones are ten millimeter. All right. So I'll put the uh, heat shrink on first, and then put that on. And give it a crimp. good solid crimp like this tug on it and it doesn't come off and uh, that'll be good for 
long as I need. And then I always put the heat shrink on it just to make sure that uh, there's nothing exposed. Just coming out there, and I gotta crimp that. The yellow, yellow is for a 10 to 12 gauge. It's not going to move. There we go. I like that. Everything looks good. All right. I don't know if you can see what's going on. Essentially, this is my breaker. When I'm, my circuit breaker uh, is engaged and disengaged. And now I just need a little jumper to my bus bar. And now this is where I'm going to feed my DC panel. So panel one, panel two. Um, and then my bilge, I want to have dedicated on the bus bar here. So um, it won't go through the panel. It won't have another breaker. But this basically, this 30 amp breaker is for all of my DC power. And uh, at my last count, I was using uh, just over 12 amps, I think is what it was. So it's 12 or 13 amps of the 30 with everything running, my fridge, everything. So yeah, that's what we're doing. Um, got this last, uh, or these hookups to do, and I'm going to do a temporary hookup for my lighting, uh, my bow, stern lighting, so my interior lighting, my running lighting, and my bilge pump. So once my those three things are running, uh, oh sorry, and then one line to my motor. Uh, so those are the four things that I'm going to temporarily connect. And uh, then I'm going to finish sanding and getting all of this in here. So this is my plate, which will be uh, where all of my uh, instruments are going to go. So my bilge control, my alarms, key, and my, uh, my BMV 712, my Victron battery monitor. So those are all going to be here in this little panel. Be a little cramped, but uh, that's why I decided to do it this way. I was cutting, I, I had the holes kind of cut out before, but I like the idea of just using the panel and then being able to um, pre-drill the panel, paint this white, and then it'll just look like the door. So I'll have a white door here with the circuit panels, and then I'll have this one here, which is uh, my little bit of a custom panel. So that's what I'm going to work it on. Uh, so to launch, I need my mast installed. I have to do a joiner on the mast, some kind of plug. I couldn't figure out how to do that, so it looks like I'm going to be low on wire. So I'm going to have to put some extensions, but I just wanted to do a, like a, a connector that I could disconnect and reconnect. So I'm going to go look for an automotive plug somewhere on Saturday. Um, that way, I, uh, it's my, uh, my deck lighting. So on my spreaders, I have some LED lights, and every time, every year, I've had to redo the lighting. <laughs> because uh, they don't come apart. Like I put these little butt connectors on and they, I just, they don't work. They get corroded or whatever and then they end up falling off the wire. It's, it's, they're not very good. So I want to just get a um, an automotive plug for that. So that's the plan. Um, the motor and the throttle cable, I've got to get that running over here. So that's for tomorrow. And then my AC hookup tomorrow is also going to happen. Um, so I should be able to run the motor uh, tomorrow and then um, have my solar panels connected up to the battery systems. So I'm getting there. Uh, there's still a lot to do. But yeah, all of this I'm going to re-sand down everything on the inside and give it all one fresh uh, coat of paint now that I've got my structure built. And uh, back here, it's looking good. It's all the first coat of primer. And uh, the boards underneath um, 
the V-Birth mattresses are all in. Those are also good. So I've got some F26 compound, uh, fairing compound, that I need to kind of go over everything again. And I probably will do it two more times. Um, so one to kind of get rid of all the, everything that's big that I can see. And then I'm going to go really close and then do another another round after that. And potentially a third time. But by the time I'm doing the third time, it's pretty, it's almost like there's nothing left to do. Uh, it's just like a line or a nick or something like that. So at that point, I'm being picky. But uh, yeah, I think it's going to look pretty good. This is how it, this is actually the finished uh, end here. But when I, uh, I did, there's a bump up here that you can't see. I can feel it. So I'm going to sand this down again, put more fairing compound, um, and then you prime it and put the Interlux um, bright side. This is what this is, and I like it. It's a good enamel. It's very hard, easy to clean. You just wipe it and clean it. So. Anyways, thanks for watching. We'll keep you updated. Looks like a happy face. <laughs> or a machine head. So we'll put one underneath and then one here. Mm -hmm. Some more in my notch, maybe. Get the threads through. Let's get size. One more notch. There we go. That's good. Okay. So that's good. Last one is this one. one of these new alarms from Blue Sea Systems. Haven't heard it before but you can turn this outside edge to make it louder or softer and it twiddles apparently like something like that and it's from 5 to 30 volts DC. I've been working all day. It's a long day but my boat goes in the water. I don't have any other time to work so we got to get her done. So this is the DC Audible Alarm Floyd Bell Turbo Series. Extra loud intermittent beep tone. And it can handle up to 12 to tw uh, 5 to 30 volts. Its nominal voltage is 12 to 24 volts. And at uh, 5 volts it takes 5 milliamps to run so it's almost nothing. Pretty low. And it says uh, 2900 plus or minus 250 hertz. And then it does three 25% beeps per second. And it's got some quick terminals on it. So the back side of it looks like this. I should write that the light on there. So you can see I just put some uh, quick disconnect terminals on there just for testing. And I wired uh, the positive into this yellow cable which goes down to this switch down here. So David's going to lift up the switch. Go for it. And 
that's the uh, sound coming out of it. And you can see you can mute it or make it loud. So we'll just make it like that because that's really loud. And then let go. That's chirping. Yeah. Why didn't it do that? I don't know. The last time we did it, it uh, it had this kind of run on nominal voltage thing. It's almost like it was like. <laughs> So that's the liquid cooling that we have set up and uh, it looks like all the fans are going. I can feel a good breeze and the, uh, the pumps for them are behind here. So we're now having a functional, we now have a functional motor with liquid cooling all being run off of these batteries. Those are the pumps that are running right now. So we've got uh, one feed coming into the, uh, the controller, and then we've got a second feed coming into the electric motor here. For it to be legal, we need to have our running lights. So t tomorrow we'll hook up the running lights. And then, uh, yeah, then we're back on sanding duty. So Bluetooth system's working okay. I think we go this way, 100% battery, 50.52 amps running things right now, and 55.18 uh, volts. Solar panels are charging, um, so those are good. And then uh, David got the, uh, the Bimini top up with the joiner to the Dodger. So we've got four days of worth of work. The mask goes up, and then the next day the launch. So I guess five days, but... When the mast is up, I'll have more to do here. Uh, David's looking tired. So the uh, to-do is to, we need to run a cable from here all the way through, under, and up here to connect into uh, the lighting control. And that's basically this block is the block that I'm going to use for the running lights next to it. Um, David's going to run a, a light, run a line to the front, to the bow. We're going to do that tomorrow. And then we're going to run a line all the way through the back to the stern. My stern light's on top of the um, the arch now. And then uh, I added two new lights this year. So I put one up a little closer up to the front on both sides. And that gives me a little bit more cabin lighting, I think. And uh, we took out all of these lights here. I'm gonna figure out what to do something completely different. And the reason for that was that uh, the previous owner had used yellow and white for uh, the power cables. So, as you can see here, uh, it didn't make a lot of sense to me because uh, yellow was supposed to be neutral, but the white with the red stripe was actually um, negative, and they put power sometimes. So I found yellow wires with power and I found yellow wires as ground. So it just made it really confusing. So uh, my goal is to uh, put some kind of new lighting fixtures maybe that I can angle around and then uh, get rid of all of those wires, uh, the yellow and the red. So I disconnected all the lights, anything using the old wires, and then I pulled out all the old wires already. So. Alright, so this one. Do I need to be able to put that in there? Hey everybody, so we uh, finally got this hooked up. Power's on now. Um, we uh, finished hooking up the batteries there, I'll show that in a second, but uh, pretty happy about this. So we've got um, 48 volts coming in here. Actually, it's 56. We're running on the sun right now. Uh, the solar panels are on. And uh, the way it works is that this is basically my breaker over to these two devices. And the input on each one of these devices is here. So basically, we've got one line coming in, and it splits into two. So we've got one line at 48 volts splitting into two. Um, so that way these are both, li both in, par in parallel. And then on the output of these devices, they both go into uh, parallel connections. So the, uh, the output positive 
and the output positive both go into the same bus bar and then this side is actually 12 volts. So this is 12 volts across here but because they're running in parallel it's double the amps. So these are 48 volts to 12 volts DC-DC converters with 9 amps capability. And so what I had found was that uh, when I was running my uh, my motor cooler, my liquid cooling uh, setup, uh, when I was pulling uh, power and the fridge was kicking on, I was hitting 11 amps, 10 amps, actually 10 point something. So what I did was um, I got myself a second one of these uh, DC-DC converters ran it in parallel and then now I've got 18 amps. You can run uh, indefinite amount in parallel that you want, but I've got room here to add a third if I needed to, and then I'd have 27 amps, which is like a ton of DC power. Um, I've been pretty much running everything on the skinny, trying to find the most efficient uh, products possible. And um, like I said, my whole boat is using uh, very little in terms of draw. So uh, when everything is running about 10 amps at 12 volts, which is 4 amps at 48 volts. So it's a very low draw system. So David's here helping today. How's that going? You figuring it out? Uh -huh. I so David's tasked with putting the Bimini and the Dodger. Oh, the Dodger's up right now. And then that one in the middle is the middle piece that connects the two. And then we have a nice little rain shelter and some shade. So that's trying to put a board in the back of the electrical closet for what is this to screw stuff onto? And so to make it fit the whole shape, we have this giant brace pushing against it. And dad's pushing real hard to screw it. Yeah, basically bending the board over, right? So in behind that board is fiberglass and then 3 16 plywood and then a half inch of insulation and then the hull. So there's quite a few bit of thickness in there. So the goal here is to have the screw. Can you, oh, here's the screws. So if this is the wood, I want the, the screw to be about this far through. So I'll be through both the fiberglass and the 316th plywood that's back there, so I'm just gonna. I can hear it like creaking. I can hear creaking too. Well, no explosion. The elasticity in the board gets overcome, but. So basically, we're just working. So basically, we're just working on creating a way mount things back here. It's banging. It's not springing. I don't know if it works on these brass screws, but if I can reach it. Maybe. fun working in the bilge. All right, take two. Battery tied. This is we got five seconds of filling on the other battery. Um, all right, here's what we're working on. We're, we're working on uh, this bilge and it's a disaster working in there. Uh, we use the heat gun to heat the hose. So uh, this hose is kind of brittle, but with the heat, it actually gets nice, soft, and malleable. And then we attached it to the, uh, the bilge pump here, you can see. So it's on there now, and then now we're going to try to get the drill bit in there to uh, tighten the hose clamp. Okay, let me see if I can get the uh, drill bit on there now. 
Well, here's the job we did. So we basically just made some pigtails on the uh, bow uh, port and stern or uh, starboard uh, lighting, and then we just tacked it along. We brought in the the other wires, and then we just brought this one to kind of around here with some clips. had uh, a bit of a repair this is the uh, going back four years uh, the very first fiberglass repair that I did was on this window and that's because I took the window out and I put a beam in in the middle and I'm going to uh, either put another little highlight or a little round one but anyways this is like super strong but out here it was soft and it was just a wrong chemical mix so I ended up gutting, I just ground out everything and now we're going to fill this up with fiberglass and uh, some thickened epoxy around the edges. And then uh, I've asked David, I gave him a template, gave him one to, to work with. Now he's using that to actually cut out the other ones here on the fiberglass. So we're using uh, 1208 which is a biaxial, so it's matte on one side and then it's uh, two layers uh, at a 45 degree angle on the outside so it's a very strong piece and it's almost 13 ounces thick 1208 is uh, 12 and 3 quarter ounces so we've already got three or four on this side so that's just going to be solid fiberglass afterwards and um, just did it wrong um, and anyways uh, we're using um, West Systems 105 with 205 and I've mixed it into a hardener right now with the 403 microfibers so I'm going to go with thick and epoxy just around all the seams did you get it fixed? yeah so David's pulling the stern wire so that's the uh, do you want me to just tie it up here? yeah or just leave it in, inside just close it up oh, yeah. wrapping up for the day this is how we uh, disembark after working. So we got uh, quite a few things done today. We got a, I don't know if you can see that there, but working lights. And then here up on the front, we got our uh, starboard. LED and the uh, port LED. This one over here, like I said earlier, I did it wrong uh, four years ago. And it's just, it's always been a bit soft. So I just gutted it and then just doing straight fiberglass all the way through. So I put it, got the bilge working and we got our, our float uh, sirens and goat working. So that's what the alarm will sound like. That's coming from the the uh, Blue Sea 
alarm. So this one's going to be for temperature and this one's going to be for um, too much water in the bilge. So that's basically what I've got going on there. And we're going to put probably two more layers of fiberglass on that um, window fill. So here we go. See there's one little dip here. You're going to have to clear that one little dip. Unless, uh, I don't know, could you find me just like a half moon piece to put right here? A semicircle? Like a semicircle, like half a bowl. Like, I think if it was like this, it'd be probably all right. Okay, I could go look for one. Okay. Alright, now Dad's putting another skim coat on top of the paint job that we did to fill in all the cracks and stuff and then kind of do it all over again, sand it and paint. But this is just to fill in all the cracks that are there. acetone to clean down everything all the tools in between and now we finished another skim coat all the way around up the wall and then this one here is probably going to need another one or two skim coats you can see it's pretty rough probably two two more I think we'll get it with two more so this one is going to need a lot of sanding over up in the top but it's pretty pretty thin over here and then uh, I forgot to do these um, corners so it's a bit rough working on it David is mixing up the last of the F26 compound I think we've done one good layer So just doing, going to be connecting these with this end here and, uh, and also connecting these two things up here. So I've got that fixed in here now, the uh, VHF antenna and I just need to put this line in here but I'm just going to put a dabble of the dielectric grease on there. too much and it was squeezing out. So we'll basically just do the same thing with this thing. I got grease on my hands. <laughs> the dielectric grease. There, that's better. This is looking good. Dielectric grease. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna just tape this down so it doesn't blow away on me. I'm gonna stick this last sand here. This is before our painting. We're just going to give uh, everything down with a 150. Actually, I'm going to I forgot to have to do that with the 80. And we're going to use 150 in one last pass over all these little red things with 150. 
got to get rid of all those little, just little nicks and things. And then we're going to prime it. Oof. So David was just doing some wipe down with acetone. That's the last step. Next we're going to prime. And then uh, once we get a coat of prime on, we'll put a second coat of primer on everything. And then top coat. But uh, we have to do the back, the V-birth at the same time. So we'll do the top coat. Plus down here we have to skim this here still. But this part here we got relatively done, I think. It should be pretty close. There might be a little bit of touch-ups or little thin coats here and there, but uh, we'll see how it goes. It's just supposed to be a thin coat, thin primer coat, just so we can see if we need to put any more of the um, glazing putty. Basically this little red marks here is spot glazing, so it's like really fine cracks. And it dries pretty fast, about a half an hour. So you put the primer down and then you do a little bit more glazing, spot glazing. It's pretty white, eh? Mm -hmm. what do you think? It's better white. Looks better white than multicolored. Multicolored, yeah. So dad painted on top of the repair out here on the old window. It looks nice, nice and white, nice and clean. Looks good. Actually, I don't think anyone could tell. Oh, it's a video. <laughs> Action! Action!